Previously, on the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Nice. Oh, oh. What are you doing? Oh, wow. And now, back to the worst vacation ever. Welcome, mares and stallions, dragons and dragoness. My name is Moonsaber, and this is episode 20 of our Let's Play of the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. So in the previous episode, we got through the Skelos Badlands, getting all the orbs, the talisman, all the gems, as well as the skill points. And in this episode, we're going to head off to Breeze Harbor. Now, before I go, I just wanted to make a quick note. I did go back through Skelos Badlands, just quickly going through, making sure I didn't hit any of the lava to get the trophy for doing so. I didn't, since we were just, since I was just pretty much going through the level again, without uh, anything new or interesting happening, I decided to not record that. But just letting you know, I do have that trophy now. So... Let's go ahead and jump right on to Breeze Harbor. Should be interesting. Alright, Luna, where are you taking me to this time? spit in you man wow this is a nice place definitely don't see these in equestria a lot now these guys who just shoot water at you and they're in metal buckets so we will have to charge at them hmm that could be useful ah some gems are back here back here and then we light that up. And that doesn't do anything? Interesting. Oh no, it does. I'm being silly. Of course it does. Let's go over, jump in and glide up here so we can go over here and talk with this guy. Please excuse the mess, Spyro. We are currently suffering from a land blubber infestation. First they put out the fires in our boilers, and now they've shut down our ship too. Oh, that's man. If you could stoke up the fires under the boilers, I'm sure you could make your way to the ship. The steam from the boilers will activate our highly advanced machinery. So, steam engine. You guys are basically steampunking it. I can respect that. This place definitely reminds me of uh, places outside of Equestria. Where they have to rely more technology advancement than Azeroth. Which, you know, nothing wrong with that. Anyway, interesting orb. I'm thinking you're a bad guy. Yeah, you are. But you're made of metal and you're pointy. So I'm thinking I cannot hurt you. Yes. Yeah. Firefighters. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is definitely looking like one of those coastal towns you see out in the Badlands. Ooh, cannon. Let's go ahead and take the cannon. Fire. Nope. Fire. Nope. Fire. Nailed it. Looks like there's another one over there. I wonder if I can... Can I snipe it? Snipe you from a distance. Snipe you from a distance. No, that was too far. Yeah, I'm taking it. Alright. Uh, but we can't shoot that so we can get to the gems in there. Alright. So, yeah. Those coastal towns. Basically a martyr, a hive of scum and villainy. 
for the less reputable folks. It is actually... Hmm, I don't know if you guys want to hear this story. But there's a story I'd like to tell. And I... I mean, besides the fact that I can't even hit this guy. But... It was a story about a mission that I was on not too long ago. And... I mean... You know, sometimes even as even though I am currently the uh, I deal in the main military aspects of Luna's Night Guard, so she can focus more on her royal duties as a princess. Sometimes, which is more of an administrative work than anything else, you know, lots of paperwork, inspecting guards, you know, natural things like that. Raise the water level here. That'll be nice. Okay, that allows us to continue. So going back on track. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, one day, a few days ago, we get a report from a friend of Twilight's saying that another friend of Twilight's, and, you know, being the princess of friendship, he's got, makes sense just because he's got a lot of friends with in and around the Equestria. But this friend, the first one, makes mention that the second friend, uh, got herself into, hmm, let's say a less than ideal situation. Now, this, mm, Luna is calling me, give me one moment. Alrighty, sorry about that. Luna really wanted to go over some of those deals, those some of those uh, reports, you know. She can be a bit militaristic sometimes. If you can clear them out, I'll give you this orb I found in a clam yesterday. Oh, that sounds good, I'll take that. I also can't have these mines around. They're a danger. So we'll need to use the cannons to shoot out the mine. Just gotta find the right spot to hit. Nailed it. Alright. So, where was I with my sword? Oh, yeah. So this friend of Twilight, she got herself in a rather, well, sticky situation. And normally, you know, she's not, this friend, you know, not really the kind to get herself into a situation like this. She's usually the, I want to go into the lava. That would be not good, not good at all. She's normally the kind that you, you, want, you wouldn't expect her to get into a situation like that. She would be the one to put other ponies into the situation she was in, but... She was trying. She's trying to change her, uh, you know, the way others think about her, uh, you know, and figuring that, you know, she was wanted to try to. She wanted to do less, more good than harm to try to make up for past mistakes and wrongdoings. Which aren't we all at one point or another? So naturally, when news of this got to Twilight, she was all like. Let's go. I'm gonna go uh, help out this friend of mine, you know. Known each other for so long. And just wanna really help her out. And her friends were all for it, going out there helping her, but the other princesses thought about it. Um, you know, having been more of a rational thought, keep saying, you know, need to stop doing that. Had been more rational thought about them. And they figured that because of the reputation Twilight and her friends had over in this particular place, they didn't think it was such a good idea to be going out there, uh, going out there and, you know, taking care of business. They were worried that they would end up being captured, or they would just not be given the time of day. So, they figured that a more subtle approach would be a better solution. And since, you know, and since, so it was decided upon that I would go out. Oh, there's more. All right. Since it was, so it was decided that I would go and handle the negotiations. Check this sign, make sure, yep. Yeah. Make sure uh, that there wasn't any more of these minded. So I would go and handle out the proceedings. I was given, so I was given a chest, nice chest, by the way, 
tr and it was filled with bits and gems. And there was a lot of bits and gems. Definitely enough for someone, for some pony to live a comfortable lifestyle. Maybe not super rich, like upper class can a lot mobility rich. Even though I don't know why anyone would want to be one of those types of snobs, except for Fancy Pants, he's alright. He's the only one I really tolerate. I actually like. No shooting water at me, please. Thank you. Alright. So yeah, it was definitely enough. Fortune will need that. Uh, no, it was definitely enough for someone to live a comfortable life. And I was to take these over, and I was to engage in negotiation with the person, the creature who had uh, Twilight's friend uh, held captive. And I asked the capper, who was the one who told us about this, to come along with me as sort of a guide through the Badlands and also to make sure that we didn't run into any and to sort of act as an arbiter of sorts, just in case any well, not even so much an arbiter, but just also to make sure that I was able to get an audience with this person. Because the last thing, because that was definitely a worry that I wouldn't be able to get an audience. So Capper was there to ensure that. Sure such a thing would happen. So, in addition to Capper and myself, I also brought along ten guards to serve two functions. One was to ensure that no one got greedy in taking our... And taking that chest and also to make sure and also to execute a backup plan just in case negotiations fail I don't know yeah you don't run away from me so with negotiation so we get to the town and we notice that there's a circuit that they've already started setting up a circus tent on the outskirts of the town, which is where we decide to uh, set up our camp. After getting a uh, good bit of rest, uh, lucky for me that you came along. My machinery is broken, and the gears I need to repair it are scattered all over the tracks. Can you hop on that trolley up there and collect them for me? Collect 50 gears with the trolley. Okay, sounds good enough. I just really came up here to see if you had any gems, which you did. I'll come back and help you out in a little bit. I wanted to make sure I get the talisman first. So, the, we reached the town. Well, the outskirts of the town. And we move, and we go to the circus. Like that up. Like that up. That should, yep, activate the ship. So, we get to, so after we make camp, and we go to the tent, I had five guards keep an eye on the tent and us to make sure that there wasn't any sort of suspicious activity, like they tried to move uh, Fizzle Pop, which is the name of the pony who we were rescuing, off to a more secure location, or if anything else was to go awry. Thanks for getting our ship fired up, Spyro. Now we can proceed with our counterattack on Zephyr. Please take this talisman as a token of our gratitude. Oh, how nice. I was just planning on going to Zephyr after this anyway. So I'll be sure to see you guys there, right? Anyway, we get our talisman, the anchor. The portal comes back up. But we're not done here because we still have some gems and some orbs. Let's see. Oh. So that's where that one will be at. Is that? Let's fly on down here, because I saw that there was some gems in from the place that I destroyed. So I get so Capper so thanks to Capper I was able to get a meeting with the owner and negotiations began. And, you know, I was trying to first first I was trying to, you know, talk him into releasing her. Saying like, you know, she's just out there trying to uh you know, spread the word of friendship, you know, prove, show to everyone that she's a good pony now, and make up for past wrongdoings, but he was having none of it. So I moved on to offering him the, you know, the bounce, the, uh, 
bits and the gems in the chest. But, well, I guess the concept of having such a fam uh, famous or infamous, depending on how you want to look at it, pony Thanks, Pyro. has the Here's lead. That orb I promised. Sorry if it still has clam juice on it. Ew, don't touch. That's a sticky. I don't know, I've never actually had a clam before, so I wouldn't know. Going back on topic, we... So I tried offering him the, uh, the bargaining of the gems and the bits, but he was having none of that because I guess he figured that he would earn a lot more money than I was offering him. Thanks, uh, by having such a famous or infamous pony, depending on how you want to look at it, as the head of his performance. Which, dealing with enough of those people, you start to sort of understand how they think, how they view the world, and I kind of figured that was going to happen. So, which is why I came up with plan C, which is to get, which, while all of this is going on, I'm going to start. Alright, smash that. Oh. Oh, ah. Trouble with the trolley, eh? Alright, so going back on topic, once I get back onto the trolley. As I was negotiating negotiating with them, I had two of my guards, special elite infiltrator guards, go and infiltrate the tent get past all the guards, locate Fizzle Pop, and begin the process of extracting her out of there without them, without him knowing. So I was pretty much serving as the distraction while ah. Trouble with I was pretty much serving as the distraction while they were getting Tempest, uh, not Tempest, Fizzle Pop out of there. And the way we got them out was, you know, it was pretty ingenious. So, what we ended up doing was creating, uh, using a technique that we developed that the Thresholds, which were the bat ponies for those who don't know, they developed a few magical skills of their own, uh, known as uh, Shadow Magic. And one of them was the ability to, and I kid you not, they were able they're able to create a portal of sorts. Allowing them to ooh, travel with it. Allowing them to link two positions and travel and have and any pony can travel between those two positions. Now, the requirements for these are pretty uh, simple, but also a bit challenging for those who don't know. One of them is that it has to be nighttime. Most, if not all, shadow magic requires uh, requires the user to it requires it to be nighttime for the user to use the abilities. And the second one is that the portals require two train two ponies who are trained in the shadow in that particular skill in that particular skill. So, for example. Uh, one of them has to be at one end, and the other has to be at the other. And I am not doing so well on this mission. Oh boy. But if you are able to pull it off, you pretty much get a nice. It's pretty much an almost instantaneous back and forth, allowing you to shepherd. Bear, allowing you to shepherd. Enough units that the two ponies are able to uh, reasonably control because it does put a strain on the users, the ones maintaining the portals, to transport a number of ponies. So, for example, someone like two who are just learning the skill can only probably transport one at a time, but those who are more experienced would be able to transport two or three before they start uh, getting, feeling the effects. And for the really experienced ones I've been told, and this is way back in the day, like a thousand years ago, they were able to transport like almost entire squad. Hmm. 
uh, pretty much transport entire squads through this method, which is impressive to say the least. So, as you pretty much surmise, once once the negotiations ended, and you know, I left as courteously as possible because you know, courtesy is all that important within the guard. As that was going on, Fizzle Pop was being rescued by the guards. They brought her back to the camp where we packed up, our, you know, we spent the last night resting and recovering before we escorted her back to Canterlot to visit Twilight and, you know, catch up on lost time, as friends do. Just uh, making sure that I keep myself on track. Unless the reports we got from him indicate from Capper that his reputation pretty much got shot from the loss of his uh, main attraction. And he's now struggling a bit financially. Should have probably taken the bet when you had, and then we wouldn't be in that situation. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if he did take the bet and then just decided to, you know, turn against me? Well, in that case, I would have had to resort to a more aggressive action. Now, I wouldn't say threatening, but I wouldn't say that I wouldn't be intimidating. And there we go. That was great work, Spyro. Now I can start fixing my machines. Here, I don't have room in my toolbox for this thing anymore. And I'll take it off your hand. Or wing. Take it off your wings. That's an orb. All the orbs are collected. And all the gems are collected. So this level is 100% complete and good because my story was coming out of that. Anyway. With that all said and done, let's take a look. <laughs> oh, gonna shoot him? No, no, you're gonna shoot him? No, 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 shoot him. Fire! And yeah, you, you're not gonna run very long. Alrighty, so we have a bit of time left. And I think that bit of time is just enough for us to take care of the other speedway that's located here. I got through that level pretty fast. I didn't expect... I was... You know, I was under the impression that these levels... They felt longer than the first one in the first game. But maybe that's just me. Maybe now that I'm finally getting... Like, I'm getting used to the game again its controls and mechanics, I'm able to get through the levels faster. Which is always nice. Maybe I'll actually get up to be able to do two full levels per video. So, the other level we'll need to go to, and we got a lot of levels here. Like, man, there's a lot to do in the Autumn Plains. But let's come over here and try out Icy Speedway. See if we can get that level completed. Should be another racing one, yep. I need to figure out the best way to handle this. Do I go low or do I go... Looks like... Hmm. It's always that tough part. I'm trying to figure out the best pathway to handle this.
and I'm probably going way off course. But we'll see what happens. This is a few more there. Fly up. Now let's, uh, so we took care of all those skaters. Now, uh, now we can probably go through, get through the lizard. Hit that arc. Hit that arc. And then breathe the fire down there. Now did I make the time? Oh no, 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 no. Very off. Let's try to do that time. Let's try to get it under 1 minute 15 seconds. Alright. So let's start by breathing. I think the pathway is to first breathe fire on the four hang gliders, drop down to take care of the snowmobiles, and then move on from the middle. So let's drop down, start speed throwing, get, taking up the snowmobiles. Then we're gonna fly. And we're going to start going through here. Oh! Let's hit these guys. Come over here. Oh, that was close. That was very close. Did it faster, but apparently not fast enough for the game. Let's try again. Gotta figure out a good way to get through this as fast as possible. Oh, that did not help me at all. That slow down didn't really help. about how to get the uh, how to get the skill points to here. That wouldn't work. Well, as I think about that. We'll go ahead and take care of the orb that's here. Yeah, I gotta do it in under a minute 15. So I believe the orb is here. Good job, Spyro. Looks like you're ready for a more serious challenge. How about a little paragliding? You're not afraid of heights, are you? What kind of question is that to ask to a dragon? Although, that might be an interesting thought. A dragon who's afraid of heights. Great! 
I'll tow you behind my snowmobile and you maneuver through the rings. Don't miss any or we'll have to start over. All right, let's do it. So yeah, Hunter's controlling our movement, our forward momentum, and we only have our ability to go left or right. We have 50 rings to hit. Can't miss a single one or we have to start all over. Some of this can get a bit tight, but nothing to use. Oh. Hey, I heard you were good at great. Yeah, I don't need that from you, Hunter. Seriously, when this is all over, I'm gonna be spending a nice long time over at Dragon Shores with the beaches, the drinks. It just means all sorts of relaxing time from this dragon. Also, why have you. You're still giving me these challenges? I mean, didn't you just give me the orb that you have? Because we all know you've got the orb. But, you know, Hunter be Hunter. Damn. Hey, great! Hmm. I forgot how challenging this mission is. I don't expect it to be this challenging. I guess Ripto... Yeah, I guess this game has been... It's been a bit on the challenging side. At least, the orbs are definitely for those like who are more experienced at the game. Most of them are easy to collect, enough for you to get through to unlock certain levels and put the talismans that you need. But then there's others like this that are just made for people who are, who are looking for them challenge. Hey, great. Okay, give it maybe one or two more tries before we're calling it an episode. Time to put on the serious mode. Stop trying to, you know, and actually play with two hands instead of a hand on a hoof like I have been doing. Just going through the motion. Passing through rings, feeling like I'm playing with Sonic, and collecting rings. All right, we're at 35. Damn. That one ring. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be good at flying when I can control my own flight path, Hunter. Not when I'm strapped onto a hang glider being forced to tow around. Now I could get through these rings easily on my own, but nope, we gotta do it your way. Because it's game. Hmm. I do like the paraglider, how it matches my colors. Very nice detail. Alright, here we go again. Got it! Ah! Oh. I heard you Well, I can Alright, well That didn't go so hot Didn't get the trophy uh, Didn't get the skill point here Nor got the orb here So let's go ahead and exit the level We can try again at another time And I do need to start wrapping things up because pretty soon Luna is going to be done with her morning or still haven't figured it out. I mean, it's morning, so you would think breakfast, but because she kind of works late into the kind of works through the night, wouldn't it be considered her dinner? Hmm. Something to think about. But anyway, I need to go and get myself ready to take care of her. Anyway. Thank you all so very much for watching the episode. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the content that me and my friends released. And I'll see you all again in the next episode. Until then, take care and have a beautiful evening or day or whatever time it is for you right now. Bye-bye.